We have candidates from the North West Jura constituency tonight in the studio, and we're going to ask them what they think is wrong with the European Union or defective with the European Union, and what they would propose doing about it were they elected to the European Parliament. We have with us Parik McLaughlin of Sinn Féin, a councillor in Donegal, Susan O'Keefe Labour, uh, of Labour, and a former journalist in which capacity her reporting produced a uh, rather pr uh, prompted the establishment of the Beef Tribunal many years ago. Joe O'Reilly, a Fine Gael senator, uh, Fierkra O'Loan, an independent candidate and a writer, and Michael McNamara, another independent candidate, and he wants to, uh, us to call him a farmer in County Clare. If you'd like to text us a comment on the programme, text the number 53131 and place the word Vincent before you comment, or email me at vincent.brown at tv3.ie. Text costs 30 cents, and by the way, tomorrow night the programme starts at the later time of uh, 10 past 11. Um, can I speak, start with you, Michael. Why do you want to be called a farmer uh, rather than a barrister, which is where you earn most of your income? I don't earn most of my income from being a barrister. You asked me, was I a farmer or a barrister? I said, I'm both, so you asked me to choose. I said I was a farmer before I was a barrister. You must be making loads of money as a farmer then. No, I'm not, but I'm making very little as a barrister. I'm in my third year at the bar. As you know, the bar is a very difficult place, particularly for junior barristers. All right, Parik, let's start off with you. Uh, what do you think is defective about the European Union? Well, the European Union needs to learn to listen. You know, we had a situation where the people of France and Holland rejected the European Constitution. Uh, then the people of Ireland rejected the Lisbon Treaty. And it's clear that they are failing to listen. And every time they don't listen, people become more distant from the Union. And that's very unfortunate. After the people of France and Holland uh, voted against the European Constitution, they dropped it. Well, you know, what do you mean uh, they don't listen? I, th I think that says it all. They, they, they dropped it in a tiny amendment. As you know, uh, Vincent, 96% of the European Constitution was the Lisbon Treaty, almost identical, uh, quite farcical, presented to us and we rejected it too. And now we will need to see what is the outcome. But it is actually quite sad because the European Union has huge potential. It has huge potential to promote the social Europe, to move away from militarisation, to defend workers' rights, to promote public services. It is a huge role to play in confronting all the things that have created this economic crisis that we have. And I, I actually have hope for it, but right now it's moving in the wrong direction, clearly. And what would you do about it if elected to the European Parliament? Well, we would build alliances, and, and I personally would work with my Sinn Féin colleagues to build alliances with progressive people throughout Europe, people on the ground uh, who defeated uh, this uh, constitution in France and Holland. Uh, and I think it's important that people, trade unions, community voluntary groups on the ground, start to turn this thing around, turn the ship around. The people who brought us the European Constitution and the Lisbon Treaty are the very same people who have created the international crisis, who allowed uh, free market capitalism to go crazy uh, and to create the crisis that we have. The people who brought us the European Constitution and the Lisbon Treaty are the governments of the European Union, elected by the people of the European Union. Well, you know, Barack Obama fought the US presidential campaign uh, in 08 talking about lobbyists in the halls of Washington. As you know, Vincent, we have our lobbyists in the, in the halls of Brussels and they had their fingerprints all over those documents and that's why those documents have not got the consent of people on the ground. Susan, what do you think is defective about the European Union? Well, I don't think that as a member of the European Parliament you could possibly claim to go in and repair the deficiencies of, of the European Union, so I wouldn't claim to do that in the first instance. And I also think that... So what's the point? I'm sorry? What's, what's the, the point, point of being... Well, if you, <laughs> there's plenty of point in being a member of the European Parliament. Obviously, the Parliament is the Parliament of, of the Union of the 27 nation states. And it does a lot of positive work. And actually, I think that's what we should be talking about in this, co in this context. I don't go looking for the negative in this. What do you uh, think, what the, what's the positive work they do? Well, we all know that in an Irish context, Ireland has obviously benefited. I'm not going to bore the listeners and the audience but with that because we know. We're talking about the European Parliament. We have, we've benefited but that's not because we, of the European Parliament. Parliament. We've benefited because of the Commission primarily because of common agricultural policy was there from the beginning and then there was cohesion and structural policy. No, no law passes through without the European Parliament's consent. It's a democracy. Not quite, and but I, anyway. Well, yeah. I, I'm not, I wouldn't sit here and say that I can correct the deficiencies of the European Union. That, that is not what I would go to Europe All right, but to what do. would you do as a member of the European Parliament? As a member of the European Parliament, I would seek to, to sit on the committees that I think would be of benefit to the constituency that I'm standing for, and that would namely be uh, the Tourism Committee and the Committee for Employment and uh, 
employment and they're the two big ones that I would look to target to sit on so that I could be active in pursuing the laws that are relevant to, and to push through legislation and to challenge legislation where it doesn't what, favor. What legislation in relation to tourism would you be in favor of pushing through? Well obviously you can look in terms of um, funding that comes through, in terms of infrastructure. But give us a, a specific idea, a specific proposal about legislation that you would, well, by the way the European Parliament can't initiate any legislation of any kind. It, that's entirely the prerogative of the European Commission. That's absolutely right. So it is the prerogative what do you mean of push the through legislation? But you, but right? you get the legislation is debated by the European Parliament. Yeah, the legislation put and it is by prepared the European Commission in now. committee stages. And if you go and sit in your committee, and if you are looking to put in your committee and you do the work, say on tourism, that's where you do the actual donkey work to get it through the, the Parliament. And so I'm not going to be looking to correct deficiencies. You're That's going, not you're going how to it do works. Doc, donkey work. Huh? Well, a lot of a lot of that hard work is it's donkey work in that sense. It is the core part of what the Parliament does. It's it's important, but that doesn't mean you're out there waving banners and waving is flags. Is that really why you're standing for the European Parliament? Because you want to do donkey work? Is that it? Donkey work is important work. Just because I've called it donkey work doesn't make it any less important. It means that you have to have the patience and the stamina. But, but is that it? Is that it? Is, is that it? That's why you're standing for the European Parliament. No, not at all. That, that, is, why, that is the main task of an MEP. However, you also can be an ambassador for your constituency, and that is what I would like to be. I would like to see that I can represent the constituency in its eleven counties. Should every and single one that's, that's uh, standing in the election? Would want to be an ambassador. I've for not their heard anyone else it? use the term at all. Oh, no, apart because from it's a bit pretentious. And, uh, well, and it may, but they all always you know want to represent the interests of the constituency. So there's no language, difference in that. Language regard. actually does matter. And if you say you take upon yourself to be somebody who looks for a positive attitude in Brussels in legislation for your constituency, that makes a difference. You can forge alliances with people. You can go and talk to people in Europe. You can look for examples of how things are done that might be better. So for example, there are rural developments in Holland looking at supporting rural uh, power schemes, for example. That is something that we should be doing in the West. They are doing it in the, in the Netherlands. They have used structural funding. European funding Parliament to money. Do that. But that I'm saying that as a member of the European Parliament, you can go and examine those things and bring that back. Of course you don't need, but it, you are another cog in the wheel of people attempting to improve this particular constituency. Oh. And that is a responsibility Joe that Ryan, I would take Joe along Ryan. with doing Joe looks work. like an ambassador, doesn't he? But wouldn't um, he be, if you're looking for an ambassador, he's wearing a red Labour Joe, tie. Joe, anyway. well, Joe, well, thank you very Joe much. Joe looks well, tie. Should be, should be looking at Thank you very well, much. Well, I, well, I agree well, with that. Well, yeah. um, Vincent, I believe that a lot, insofar as there is fault with the European Parliament, that a lot of it rests with native government, with the way we use the European experience, the way we use Europe. For example, we have in place at the moment in Fine Gael a plan to create 100,000 jobs that are badly needed over the next three years. To do that, we need to get investment from the European Investment Bank. I believe that we should be out what there seeking that investment. Has uh, a member uh, of the European, European Parliament got to do has, with the European Investment Bank? It has everything to do with it because we, we are aligned to the European People's Party, the largest party in Europe, and you create a goodwill, you lobby there, and you get involved in creating what a has consensus. The, what and, has and a I, member of the European Parliament got to do with the European, a European Investment Bank? A, a member of the European Parliament, I have experience on the Council of Europe, I'm out there, I know, has influence in p policy formation, in lobbying and working out there. And I'm saying that at the moment, for example, the next great deed in you the mean Northwest... the European Investment Bank is slightly corrupt? They I'm not, I'm not huh? saying that, but we would be out there making the case, seeking stimulus for the Irish economy, seeking jobs for Ireland, which is the big need at the moment. And I will what say that... Earth, no, has this Vincent, got to do with the European Vincent, Parliament? Vincent, it has everything to do with it. And something else that's needed here at the moment is we need a major package for farmers and we need intervention for dairy farmers and I'll tell you the Fianna Fáil party in this country have now joined the Liberal group in Europe and the Liberal group in Europe are 
proposing to dismantle the common agricultural policy and even though Liam Aylwood today as far as denies... I know, the European Parliament nothing to do with agriculture. Uh, absolutely, it's, a, it's co decision making in agriculture. No, I don't think it's anything to do with agriculture yeah, at all. Uh, the Europe, it's nothing to do with the agriculture. The European Parliament is, is part of the policy formations of the no, treaty. No, it isn't. It's nothing to do with agriculture. It, under the Lisbon Treaty, it would have something to do with agriculture. Yes, it would. It would be part but of co decision. The Lisbon Treaty, we're dealing with the situation as of but now. We're dealing with a situation where Ireland should be out in Europe now, out front seeking a, a, an intervention scheme for farmers where it, to support milk prices. They should be out there seeking a job stimulus. And we need in this country a stimulus for jobs. We need jobs created. We need 100,000 jobs, as Fine Gael are proposing Why over the next three years. Uh, so that's a we, no, we have costed and proposed a plan that has not been contradicted by government, and has not been contradicted by economists, that will create these jobs over the next three years. And the European element it's of investment... It's speculative stuff. For any no, it's not on, at yeah. all speculative, no. If, if, that's it. Uh, yeah, well, right. well those, I, my contention is that the way we use the European Parliament, you know, for example, some of the directives are implemented in very strict regulations here as well. So what I'm saying is it's our use of the European Parliament, our accessing power, our getting investment into the Irish economy, our getting support for our farmers, etc., and our intelligent interpretation of regulations is what's at issue more than intelligent actual... Intelligent interpretation of regulations? We, we may sometimes go over that the... It's got everything to do with it. The way, we interpret direct, the way we direct, well, the way we implement directives in this country is important. But that's nothing to do with the European Parliament. Well, it's all to do with the, the use of the European Union and our interaction with Europe and our involvement there. You wouldn't just stick to the ambassador bit, no? No, no I think it's, it's. I think we have every potential. You want to, to be use an ambassador to the European Investment Bank? Is I, that it? No, I think well, we have every potential to use. Uh, the European Parliament experience for the benefit of this country to a greater degree than we do. Vicar, yes. what do you think, uh, how do you think the European Union could be improved and what do you think you could do as a member of the European Parliament to affect those improvements? First of all, it could be improved if it did listen to all of us. Um, it's pretending to now listen represent... Listen to all of us? 500 million. Half a billion, that's what they're... You mean, oh sorry, I thought sorry. you were talking about no, the other I'm talking about the panel now. Um, so yeah, it's half a billion people they're pretending to represent in this small building in Brussels. And um, as I'm exercising my democratic right, this is a litmus test of Irish and European democracy. Uh, we have a constituency, mass, ma it's the biggest constituency in Europe. So I'm exercising my democratic right to say, okay, I've got some points. I actually think I would be representative of this constituency. How, do, how does somebody like me get elected if I've got the right ideas? If my how do you know it's the biggest constituency in Europe? That's what's been said. It's one of the biggest, if not the somebody biggest. Somebody said that, is it? That's right. A few people have said it. Go have on. you not said it yet? Go on. Go on. Okay. So, um, obviously, Europe isn't listening to the people. I've worked in Germany. I've worked in Spain. It's a myth that, you know, suddenly Ireland for voting no has no friends in Europe. Actually, our position is, uh, is heavily sympathised with all over Europe. So um, people are listening. Sorry? So people are listening. Uh, the wrong people, are, the right people are listening, but the right people are the people who don't have power. You know, um, and uh, that's why I've actually bought and I'm developing a website, dearmrpresident.eu and dearmrspresident.eu, that if they are so crazy as to propose that there is going to be a president of the EU, a king or a king, kaiser of the EU, then we're going to make him accountable. Like an open source um, letters to the editor page. It's going to be letters to the president and it's going to be... So you don't need to be a member of the European Parliament to do Absolutely that. not. And chances, so we're, and chances we're are... About, so what you, why should that be relevant to your running for the European Parliament? Absolutely. And, you know, people I mean, absolutely. It's not relevant. Do you agree with me? It's not a lot of people say, oh, but you're not going to get elected. I might, might not get elected, but I'm going to make sure that we bring up the points in this electoral process. As Noam Chomsky says himself, it's not necessarily about getting elected. It's about making sure that the issues are aired during the electoral process. And you, you and think I think this to set up a website, dear Mr. President or dear Mrs. President? And propose many new ideas. During, and I think this constituency, where everyone keeps on talking about that it's peripheral, peripheral, peripheral. Actually, sometimes being on the peripheries, you get the best, <coughs> the best perspectives. And I think that we are actually in a position to offer some of the best perspectives about the future of Ireland and Europe in this constituency. Michael, as a farmer in Clare, and 
uh, who is as, a, as a citizen of the European Union, um, I think the single biggest problem with the European Union has been a failure to communicate the European project to citizens. Brian Cowan went out to the European Council after the failure of Lisbon last October and said that a lack of knowledge about the Lisbon Treaty and a lack of knowledge about the European Union project more generally, which was not unique to Ireland, contributed to the failure of the Lisbon Treaty and allowed misinformation to be spread about the Lisbon Treaty. I believe that's still the case. What's it got to do with the European Parliament? What's it got to do with the European Parliament? Yeah. I believe for any parliamentarian or a, even a member of a local council or a member of a national parliament, their job is to communicate what is happening in government to their constituents, ascertain the views of their constituents and represent the views of their constituents in that parliament I, when law is being made. That's what parliamentarians do since, since the Greek parliament right up to today, or at least that's what they should be doing in a democracy. Uh, and what would you do as a member of the European Parliament? You'd communicate better what's happening in Brussels and Strasbourg with the people of Clare and other parts of the northwest constituency. From Loophead right up to Malinhead, yes. I mean, that would be my role, and that's what I would try to do. I was in a bar in Fecal County Clare last uh, Saturday night, and somebody was started talking about the Lisbon Treaty and why they rejected it, and they said they rejected it because nobody could bo be bothered explaining it to them. I mean, I think the least that we can do is explain what is happening in Europe to people. That is why we are elected. That is why parliamentarians are elected. Is there any other any other reason why people should vote for you in the European Parliament other than that you'd uh, every now and again come back and tell them what was happening in Europe and Strasbourg? No, it wouldn't be every now and again. I mean, I think there's a problem of people getting elected, disappearing for five years, and coming back again. Yeah, I mean, I live in Clare. I have lived in Clare for most of my life. But you'd have to live in Brussels or Strasbourg for a fair amount of the time. Yes, I would, and, main, uh, and remain in touch with people, remain in touch with community groups, the length and breadth of this huge constituency, and give them a voice in Europe, a voice that they desperately need at the moment, because I feel that a lot of people, community groups included, feel alienated from Irish Do government and from all levels of government moment running in this in your constituency that wouldn't talk the same stuff about communicating better with the people of the constituency letting them know more about what's going well, on. Well you've asked five different candidates and I'm the one who's mentioned this so obviously but would yes you think, is the but answer it, Do you that. think it distinguishes you? Do you think that uh, every, uh, everyone else would do, do you think that anybody would disagree with you? Yeah. He's, a, he's a good guy. Well, I mean, I, I'm open to be disagreed with, but I do believe in the European project. I believe vehemently in the European project. I believe it's benefited Ireland. Were you in favour of the Lisbon Treaty, by the way? Yes. You are? Uh, yes, I voted nobody yes would, to the Lisbon Treaty. Pardon? I voted yes to the Lisbon Treaty, as did the majority in Clare. Okay, and I would did, vote yes again. Uh, 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 Joe, uh, yes. Joe, presumably you voted the Lisbon Treaty. Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, Susan, did you? I happened to be in the wrong part of the country on the day of the um, election, uh, the referendum, but I, I would have voted yes. Vincent, I do see some merit in what Michael is saying in that there is something of a disconnect between ordinary citizens and the parliament and knowledge and there is a case and it's something that I've been saying in my literature and speaking to people around the area, for the members of the parliament holding an open forum meeting the interest groups and individuals constituency by constituency every couple of months. I mean, it is a mechanism that could be used to bridge that divide. But certainly there is something of a disconnect, and he is correct to that extent. I mean, let's face it, it's a bit of a, a sort of a split personality type of job, because you have your constituency and the needs of that constituency to look after. You do have a certain national framework that you have to grasp as an MEP, because, you know, your constituency is in your country. And then you have your responsibilities to, in Europe. So you, it, it is very much a mix between those three. But your work, actually the job that you sign up for, is to work in the Parliament. That's, uh, the, that's the actual job. I, I think this is all awful, quite frankly, uh, the, the conversation. Because, I mean, if you're a fisherman now along the west coast of Ireland, uh, you don't think the reason why you rejected the Lisbon Treaty was a failure to communicate. You, you see the common fisheries policy yeah. as a profound failure. Yeah. If you're sitting on a town in the west of Ireland that doesn't have a rail link to another town or a proper road to another town, you don't think it's a failure to communicate. You think that it's quite clear that there has been an underspend in terms of infrastructure in the west of Ireland as opposed to the east, the west that needed it most. So in every level, if you're a farmer, a uh, dairy farmer, your back's against the wall, in every level, Europe is not delivering for you. And also in tandem with that, that is why 160 out of 166 TDs in our doll called for us to support the Lisbon Treaty, why they were out of touch with people on the ground. Listening to this conversation from the main parties and from Fianna Fáil, and by the way, I'd like to know where Pat the Cope Geller is hiding right now. Uh, I'm repeatedly challenging him to come out Pardon? and defend his government's record, and he isn't here we, yet we, again. We have, we have, uh, we have uh, texting from somebody about uh, Pat the Cope, Cope Geller. It says, where is Fianna Fáil? Uh, on the panel, Pat uh, the Cope seems to have a lower profile than Osama bin Laden. 
Um, but well, actually it's it, it isn't our fault. We well, invited Pat to come on. We invited all the candidates to come on. The when you're Brian Cowan's handpicked candidates, when you're the golden child representative for the government, when you're a guy that voted for you know cervical vaccines being removed, criminalisation of fishermen, taking uh, money from hard-pressed farmers, small farmers on the ground, uh, and voting for everything that a popular Patrick, government, I would hide away I, too. I can tell I you, think, I think Patrick uh, is exaggerating the difficulties here. Uh, the the, the EU has de delivered over the years to farmers. It has opened up a uh, social opportunity, it opened up rights for women, rights for people. It has built a great infrastructure in the country. The, the amount of good that it has done is enormous, and the way it has transformed this country is enormous, and that probably has not, been very, uh, has not been very well communicated. So to that extent, I disagree with Patrick. But, uh, you know, it's a, I, I think Patrick, you do have to work at a parliamentary level, and then you have to communicate at local level. Mike, it's, Perry, it's very easy to dismiss something as waffle. Well. If you're a fisherman in the west of Ireland, you want to be sure that now that the common fisheries policy is being reviewed, you want your voice to be heard. You want to be ensure that you will never be sold out like you were sold out before. If you're a farmer in the west of Ireland, you do want your voice to be heard. You do want to be sure that the farming sector in Ireland will not be sold out like fishermen were. And they came very, very close with GATT last year as it was being presented. And only at the very last minute did the Irish government agree that they might exercise their power of veto if called upon. And, that, and, and also, I'll come back to one thing that Joe O'Reilly said, and you've I, I disagreed with him, Vincent. You said that how European laws were applied in, I, in Ireland had nothing to do with the European Parliament. It does. If you're a parliamentarian and you pass a law in Europe, you at least owe it to the European Parliament where you're sitting to ensure that that law is being properly and fairly applied in Europe, which is not the case with a whole raft right. of laws in uh, Ireland, okay. which affect fishermen uh, okay. and we farmers got, and many industries in Ireland. And, uh, we will preview tomorrow morning's newspapers after the break, but let's have a quick look at the front page of the Irish Times. And it leads with religious orders must reveal extent of assets to government, institutions and Taoiseach to hold meeting next week and uh, also Barcelona flair ensures clear victory and a grace note by Messi. John is